it's been about a month since I've made my last video and uh, I've been on military duty for the past couple weeks here and I, unfortunately I haven't had time to record but it has given me time to reflect and think about the kind of content that I want to make on the channel going forward and uh, actually create some presentations. So the next four or five videos of this channel is probably going to be all about APRS or the Automatic Packet Reporting System. Uh, so I've decided to start with pretty much a proof of concept uh, system which I've actually created and put together in my car uh, just out of different parts I have laying around and I uh, decided to just do a little write up on it and just explain how it all works together and how you can get started doing uh, digital radio as a technician uh, relatively cheap and so we're going to go ahead and get started on this and let's drag me out of the way <clears throat> and this is just a cute little name I gave it um, so this is a presentation on the budget APRS portable system BAPS the creation of a cheap yet effective system that utilizes the APRS network to make an effective communication system complete with display and messaging so this presentation alone isn't going to go in depth of what APRS is however we will be coming out with a video soon that details what it is this is really made for those like myself who don't have a lot of money to burn just to show them that they can get started with a very nice APRS system with all the functionality without spending three to four hundred dollars so next slide this is short and to the point just explaining really quickly what is APRS? APRS is the automatic packet reporting system. Messages may contain the GPS coordinates of a station and it uses the AX25 data link layer protocol. You can send custom messages with it. And this is just a little sample image at the bottom of some stations that are plotted on the map using their GPS coordinates that were transmitted with the APRS. What can APRS be used for? Again, this is tailored for beginners, okay? This isn't for you guys that have been around for a while. So, um, it can be used to send the GPS position, uh, your C GPS position data to others, blah, blah, blah. It can be used uh, for sending of custom messages to others. Situational awareness of other has stations, hazards, and objects all shared and plotted on a map for everyone to see. So the cool thing is people can send different objects and their station call sign to other people and it will plot that. Most software will plot those points on a map geographically so you can see where they're located visually uh, as you're navigating around the world or staying stationary. Navigation in case of emergency where other means may not be available. So that I think is one of the most important aspects of APRS. So in the case that say these cell towers go down uh, or something like this uh, uh, you know communications down and you're trying to find the location of another person or entity or object using APRS uh, with VHF communication means that you have a local way of maybe one to up to maybe 10 miles uh, depending on your terrain and that's very rough okay that's a very rough estimate you have that range and if there's a repeater that would be even more of uh, being able to send digital radio, radio packets to other people to show them where you're located so <clears throat> in in case of an emergency if cell towers are down and you're not able to send uh, send message digitally uh, with your cell phone or wherever it be then you can still pick up the radio and without saying uh, yeah I can't really Tell you where I'm at and I'm over by a truck at the gas station down the road you can actually send them a digital radio packet and if they have some type of source of backup power they'll be able to receive that and see on the map where you're at and locate you so it's very good for emergency use um, storm chasing uh, and there's there's just various other things you can do about with it so what is the goal of BAPS so we want to create an all-in-one device that has everything we need to utilize the APRS network with minuscule hassle that can be used in emergency situations. We want to have the ability to take the device on the go or mount it within a vehicle. So that way vehicle can supply power 
and it can be there when we need it and if we need to take it out as we're going hiking or something like that we can pick it up and take it with us have the ability to send and receive custom messages and visually see the location of other stations so that's where our screen comes in you can do all the other stuff without a screen but to visually see the location of other stations and to send and receive messages you have to have some type of interface and of course with this channel we're going for a budget friendly setup so we're going to be keeping it under two hundred dollars which is very good if you've seen the commercial uh, solutions so there these are the components that we are going to need to build this system so there's hundreds of ways that you can do this this is the most effective budget friendly setup that I could find that I put together here I know some of you that are more experienced might have found something else. Do let me know in the comments. I'm curious. But for now, we're going to go with this. And this is a basic setup that can get you started. So you need a tablet or other computer capable of running a software TNC, a terminal node controller. If you don't know, a TNC is what interprets data packets on the radio and converts them to a format that we understand, as well as and APRIS or as well as APRIS 32 or YACC. What are those? Those are software packages that interpret um, APRIS packets and plot them and show you on the map and let you interface and send messages and see the messages that you get and pretty much just interface with the system and do different things. Or you just need an Android cell phone capable of running the APRS Droid app. Okay? So just one more time. I'm trying not to make things too complicated here. A tablet or other computable com, blah, blah, blah. a tablet or other computer capable of running a software TNC as well as APRS IS32 or YAC, yet another Arch client. I'll have links for those in the description. Or just an Android cell phone capable of running APRS Droid. Display, if you're not using a tablet or a cell phone, because obviously those devices have a display already built in. You need a transceiver, which is a fancy word for radio. You need a radio that you can interface with a computer. You can send audio back and forth with the audio line. You need a GPS. One could argue that you don't need the GPS because you can manually enter your coordinates. If you're completely stationary and you know your coordinates already, that's fine. But usable wise for what we're going for with mobile use, you need a GPS. You need an antenna for your transceiver radio. You also need a power source to power all this because we're going on the go, remember? So we need some type of portable power uh, for when we take it out of our vehicle and we want to take it somewhere. If we're not using a touchscreen, example, no, uh, no tablet or phone, then we'll need an input method keyboard, mouse, uh, that type of thing. And then we also need an interface between the computer, tablet, cell phone, and transceiver. So that's the audio line that goes from the radio to your computer or Raspberry Pi or whatever you decide to use. And we'll get, we're going to break down all of these and get into them. And I'm going to show you an example of the budget-friendly setup that I have. So for the tablet or computer, uh, I've got three options on the screen here. The first one, which I highly recommend, is the WinBook TW700. It's only $7. It's a Windows tablet. Unfortunately, they don't manufacture them anymore, so you have to get them secondhand. Uh, but there's plenty of other uses, uh, ham-related, if you don't decide to use it with this project. Um, if you go with that, you don't need an additional display, and you also need the uh, USB splitter dongle because uh, it only has one USB out because you'll need a sound card to plug into it and you'll need a GPS. The next option is a cheap Android phone which I recommend the Galaxy S3 because it's uh, or S5 anywhere between there because they're 90 to 200 dollars depending which one uh, and it's super easy to get the APRS Droid app and it's pretty much plug and play after that. Um, and it has a GPS with it. You don't need a display. You don't need an input method. It's pretty much everything you need in one package. Uh, there are some other Android phones that will work. I didn't comprise a big list, but those are the ones I know will work and are budget friendly. 
The next thing I could recommend is the Raspberry Pi. Uh, not the Pi Zero because we need to attach a screen to it, but there's definitely plenty of other ham related uses. There's plenty of USB ports to connect things to, but our cons are it requires an external display to be, uh, to be purchased. So you need an external display to connect to it so we can visually see those stations uh, and messages. And it also requires an external sound card. So I guess I'll say that I'm going to go back and edit this, but the WinBook also needs an external sound card. And I'm also going to post a link to this slideshow in a description uh, because it's got important links in here that you all might want to check out. So that pretty much covers our tablet or computer. So if you go with uh, the Raspberry Pi, you're going to need a touchscreen. So um, there is an official Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen, $70. I recommend just grabbing that one because of ease of use and you can buy it pre-assembled. So your transceiver radio. So I've picked out a few from the lowest end to a higher end uh, radio for this use. So coming in at the beginning, we have the U, the, of course the Balfang UV5R. Uh, it's cheap, $30. Uh, all of these have 5 watt max uh, transmit power. All the Balfangs will have a uh, you know, questionable quality to it, of course. Uh, but you can move up to the Yaesu FT, FT65R. It's a higher end radio because it's just a well known brand that uses better quality parts, and the receive sensitivity is definitely going to be better, as with the Yaesu FT60R. Um, but it just depends on how much you want to spend. I will say I have used the Balfang with this setup, and as long as you configure everything correctly, it, it works. Um, but that is the most budget friendly option and I find it super easy to interface too with a computer because they commercially sell the cable. So the next thing is our GPS. Pretty easy. Uh, you just need a USB GPS with MEA, NMEA output and it needs to interface either by USB or Bluetooth. I really recommend the uh, USB dongle uh, the G-Mouse USB GPS receiver. You can buy it off of eBay or Amazon for about $15. Um, it needs to be a serial GPS output from a GPS equipped... Or, I'm sorry, the other option is a serial GPS output from a GPS equipped radio system. If you have one of these, you probably know what I'm talking about. I have my uh, FT100D in the car. I, I can run a line from it into a port on a computer and it will feed me the GPS information for my radio. But I really recommend just the USB dongle, $15, pretty simple to set up. It's almost the cable that would connect your radio to your computer is probably just as much as the GPS. So I really recommend just getting that, uh, that GPS dongle. Next thing is your antenna. So as I said, remember this is something that we're going to probably put in the vehicle but take out when we need it. So you can mix and match, uh, just kind of get creative with it. Uh, my favorite antenna for mobile is the Tram 1185, it's $23, works on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Got a great range, awesome mag mount, um, the only problem is if you want to take it on the go, uh, obviously it attaches to your roof with a strong magnet and it really uses your roof as a ground plane to magnify the signal up in the air, uh, reflect the signal into the air. So not so recommended for... Um, for mobile use. So I also have of course the Nagoya NA771. Uh, it's a kind of a well known in the in the lower ends and like antenna upgrade world. It's got some good range. Uh, the only thing is you can't mount it and it has some great mobility. Um, and then the cheap option, actually the free option is a rubber duck. It comes with your HT. It comes with your HG, you don't have to spend any extra money, uh, but of course, in the vehicle, it's not going to perform too well. Next thing we're going to need is the power source. So, while we're in our vehicle, we have to power our computer slash tablet slash phone slash whatever we chose as our software or our uh, computer. Uh, and so, 
and just a regular micro USB cable with a 12 volt car USB charger uh, should do you. Uh, you just plug that right into the cigarette lighter and you have power. So for the transceiver or the HT or radio, you're going to need a uh, battery eliminator. So this makes it to where if you want to take it out, uh, out of your car and all that other stuff, you don't actually have to take it in your apartment or your house every night just to charge the battery for it. This will wire directly to your car. You start your car and boom, you have power. So on the go, uh, we have for the computer a pretty much any standard battery bank. Uh, I found one on Amazon for $7. It's uh, relatively cheap. Um, and like I said, all of these that are underlined are links. So if you guys want to check out what I have here, you can uh, either Google or type in the, the brand that I have written down or just download the PowerPoint and click on the links. But, um, sorry, the, the cable was $7. The power bank is 8,000 8, milliamps, which isn't bad for $9.99. Uh, it's a pretty decent little battery box there. So the best way for your transceiver on the go is to use what it comes with, the battery that's built into the, the HT. Um, basically, you would pull it out of the battery eliminator, slap your actual battery on there inside, and you'd be able to go with it. And uh, if you want to be super complicated, uh, you can bring a 12 volt battery with a power inverter and rig it all up that way. There might be an easier way. I'm sure somebody will let me know down below. But uh, that's an option too. So input. If you're not using a device with a touch screen, obviously you're going to need a, such as a Raspberry Pi, you're going to need a way to interface with that so you can type in your messages and move your mouse. So the uh, iPads port is only $13.99. It links over Bluetooth and uh, it's got a little mouse pad on there and a little uh, little keyboard pad. And so if you have the software running on Raspberry Pi with a touch screen or any other type of screen, then you can just uh, plug in your little keyboard and and use that to interface with. So the big one is we need to connect the radio to our computer slash tablet slash phone. So to do that we have a few options and they do vary in price. So as I was saying before the cable for the bow thing is commercially available. Uh, that's the one that I would recommend. Bow thing super cheap and the cables only 20 bucks too so with the bow thing you just order this BTEC APRS K1 cable it's 20 bucks you connect it to the bow thing you connect it to your phone slash tablet slash computer you turn on box on the bow thing and boom you have input and output audio on the radio which will allow you to send and receive APRS packets so the next option is uh, the mobile linked and there, there are some probably some stuff in between there, but you get into homebrewing your own cables, and that's not very beginner friendly. So the FT25R and the FT65R can both use a cable from Mobile Linked, um, or you can actually get the Mobile Linked system itself. Um, so the Mobile Linked is a cool, really cool piece of device, uh, really cool device. So it links up with Bluetooth with either your phone with the APRS Droid app or your computer slash Raspberry Pi with the Bluetooth dongle uh, running uh, YACC or the APRS IS32. So it's a way to interface wirelessly between your radio and your, your uh, computer, but it's kind of a novelty thing, and here on this channel we're frugal and like to save money, so we don't really have money to throw around for novelty. So for this purpose, I have went with a BTEC APRS K1 cable that was 20 bucks. So if you're using Raspberry Pi or any other computer without a 3.5 millimeter input output, which most smartphones, all those galaxies I listed do have it, and tablets have it, you also need a USB sound card. Uh, with the 3.5 millimeter jack input output sound. So the one I recommend is the LZYCO USB sound card on eBay or Amazon it's for $7.99. It's a super cheap solution and you literally just plug the USB in there and then you plug your audio cable in there and you're good to go. 
So, uh, I didn't get in-depth in building this, but these are merely a suggestion and a uh, practical way to build the system uh, and get yourself a uh, budget-friendly APRS setup that is mobile and on the go uh, out of the car besides, you know, I've been away too long today. But with these tools, you'll be able to assemble a portable APRS solution with practical uses in the emergency situation as a very reasonable price. The APRS network is a very handy tool for amateur radio operators for a variety of situations. APRS is also a good tool for finding the repeaters in your area you're in, as well as the frequencies and offsets they are using. So that's just a little bit of more information for beginners. You can actually use APRS to see uh, repeaters broadcast their frequencies and offsets and that type of thing. You can also use it to send SMS, text messages, and emails. And so next week I'm going to be uploading and doing a presentation on APRS itself, what it is, what you can do with it, and how it works, and uh, we'll go in more in depth there. But this is a video really made just to show people uh, that they can get a system set up and kind of talk them through it and what they might need and, and kind of get you started uh, with APRS on a budget. Anyways, if you guys like the video, make sure you subscribe. There are going to be quite a bit of APRS related videos here in the future in the next coming weeks. Thanks for watching.